Deze doe ik nog voor jullie. Dank je wel. Dank je wel, Hans. Uh, goedemiddag, mijn naam is Sander Rijnmakers. Ik ga jullie vandaag, ik zal even hier gaan staan, wat vertellen over uh, Zigbee Direct. Uh, mijn collega Leo die komt direct ook nog even langs. En die mag zelf direct meer over zichzelf vertellen. Die gaat wat vertellen over Matter. Dus we hebben, twee, we hebben een duo talk uh, gedaan. Beide uh, onderwerpen uh, zijn van de Connectivity Standards Alliance. Ik ben zelf na, in mijn huidige uh, beroep als, uh, als lead development engineer bij Signify in Eindhoven, ook uh, actief uh, als voorzitter van een werkgroep binnen die Connectivity Standards Alliance. En ik hou me vooral bezig met Zigbee Direct, tegenwoordig ook wel een beetje Matter, maar uh, dat is een beetje mijn achtergrond. Dus daar zal ik jullie mee, uh, mee doorheen nemen. Um, in eerste instantie iets over de Connectivity Standards Alliance, dat is misschien een beetje abstract. Wat is dat? Uh, misschien zijn jullie bekend met wat Hans net al noemde, Zigbee. Uh, vroeger was er zoiets als de Zigbee Alliance, uh, die bestaat sinds uh, 2002 en die hield zich voornamelijk bezig met het maken van de Zigbee standaard. En de Zigbee standaard vind je onder andere binnen uh, producten als, uh, als Philips Hue uh, en ook andere Zigbee producten. Uh, dus dat is, bestaat eigenlijk sinds 2003 en in 2019 uh, kwam daar uh, eigenlijk de... de ja, de voorloper of de, de gedachte over uh, Matter uh, om de hoek kijken. En toen werd de naam Zigbee Alliance een beetje, ja, dat, werd, dat dekte de lading niet helemaal meer. En zodoende werd de naam gewijzigd in Connectivity Standards Alliance. Um, ja, wat, wat is dan de, de, het idee van die, van die alliance? Het zijn een, een, een x aantal members. Uh, 585 op dit moment, dat verandert elke maand, er komen er elke maand weer 20 bij of zo als ik de, als ik de statistieken lees. Uh, onderverdeeld in verschillende groepen, uh, we hebben daaronder Matter, dus het Zigbee uh, onder, werkgroepen noemen we dat dan. Um, um, maar er komen ook nieuwe groepen bij, zoals Health and Wellness, uh, Data Model um, en die, um, die leden, dat zijn eigenlijk gewoon bedrijven, die houden zich bezig met het standaardiseren van uh, onderwerpen die vallen onder die, uh, onder die verschillende noemers. Uh, ik ga niet helemaal in, in detail over uh, wie er allemaal lid zijn. Dit is een plaatje van, uh, van enkele namen die jullie uh, wel bekend zijn. Uh, en veel uh, zijn, zijn vooral lid ook voor, van Matter. Hè. Dus, dus, sommige leden zijn alleen lid van een bepaalde werkgroep binnen de Connectivity Standards Alliance. Bijvoorbeeld alleen Matter, sommige alleen Zigbee, sommige allebei. Uh, nou, dat is een beetje de, de, de Connectivity Standards Alliance, uh, um, high level. Um, dan even ingezoomd op Zigbee Direct. Beginnen we eigenlijk weer bij het begin. Wat is Zigbee? Zigbee is een wireless standard uh, die het mogelijk maakt om uh, via een, een, een reliable, wat heet mesh network, te communiceren met, uh, met internet of things apparaten in je huis. Dat kan een lamp zijn en... Uh, het kan een, doorbe uh, een, 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 een doorbel zijn of wat dan ook. Iets wat uh, in je huis aanwezig is, wat met, uh, met uh, Zigbee kan uh, werken. Um, het, het is onderverdeeld in verschillende lagen. Layered uh, op, on, on top of uh, IEEE 800, 802.15.4. Dat is eigenlijk de, de, de radio, de netwerklaag. We hebben een daarmee gaan de berichten over het netwerk. Daarbovenop um, zit een applicatielaag uiteindelijk... Die zegt van oké, okay, als, ik, als ik een berichtje aanstuur, dan moet er iets gebeuren bij een lamp. Dus dat is een beetje de definitie. Dat is wat Zigbee is. Um, um, Zigbee zelf bestaat dus al sinds 2003. Dus er zijn heel veel Zigbee apparaten in de wereld. Uh, op dit moment een half miljard Zigbee chipsets zold staat er. Ja, dat is dus best wel veel. Uh, dus de kans is heel groot dat in je eigen huis er al iets met Zigbee is. Um, en hier wederom een heel, heel stel uh, keywords, uh, die laat ik jullie zelf lezen. Uh, belangrijkste misschien wel, het werkt op de 2.4 gigahertz band. Dus in feite waar je wifi ook zit het, uh, en je BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy. Um, en dan ga ik nu inzoomen op Zigbee Direct. Want uh, Zigbee staat, uh, we hebben natuurlijk uh, allemaal telefoon, daar hebben we uh, uh, in principe geen Zigbee. Hè? Dus, dus uh, we hebben een... Uh, uh, een, een gap daar, hè. vaak heb je wel een mogelijkheid om via wifi naar een apparaat te verbinden in je, in je, in je netwerk. Of, hè, een bridge, iets wat 
uh, uh, je, je, je internet IP-verkeer vertaalt in Zigbee. Uh, maar je kunt niet echt rechtstreeks naar een Zigbee-apparaat praten. En Zigbee Direct probeert dat dus op te lossen. Uh, want uh, veel apparaten, zoals een smartphone, beschikken wel over een Bluetooth Low Energy Radio. Dus je kunt wel met Bluetooth communiceren. Dus als je nou iets hebt om, te combineren, uh, om die twee te combineren, dan kunnen we interessante uh, use cases mogelijk maken. Twee uh, zijn specifiek interessant voor Zigbee Direct. Dat is het commissionen van het apparaat, dus het feit dat het, 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 het installeren van je nieuwe netwerk, dus ik heb een lamp gekocht, die draai ik in mijn netwerk, die wil ik commissionen met uh, mijn telefoon. Dat kan dus ook met Bluetooth Low Energy, gebruikmakend van Zigbee Direct. Een andere manier is het, uh, het, het sturen van data, dus het echt aanzetten en uitzetten van lampen of andere apparaten binnen je Zigbee netwerk. Ook dat kan je doen met Bluetooth Low Energy en daarbovenop dan die uh, Zigbee laag. Um, zoals al gezegd, hè, dus, dus waar, de waarom is omdat er veel apparaten het op dit moment die Zigbee Radio niet hebben en het de mogelijkheid biedt om dat uh, te, te, uh, ja, uh, toe te voegen. Um, en ook omdat veel van de nieuwe Zigbee chipsets, eigenlijk de, de apparaten, de lampen, et cetera, eigenlijk ook al Bluetooth Low Energy hebben. Dus die hebben eigenlijk al een radio aan boord die zowel Zigbee praat als Bluetooth Low Energy. Dus die combinatie is er al. Die zit waarschijnlijk ook al in je huis, maar tegenwoordig ja, dat is dat allemaal uh, niet gestandardiseerd. Dus dat was een beetje de gedachte. Laten we dat standaardiseren. En dat werd dan binnen de Connectivity Standards Alliance Zigbee Direct. Um, ja, een beetje een overview van wat ik een beetje net heb uitgelegd. Um, we hebben, we hebben de, de telefoon hè, en we hebben ergens dat Zigbee netwerk aan de rechterkant. Um, nou, pointer werkt niet echt, maar. Um, en op een of andere manier wil je met, van de telefoon rechtstreeks praten met dat Zigbee netwerk. Nou, daarvoor heb je uh, natuurlijk je telefoonnummer. Dat noemen we in de Zigbee Direct wereld de Zigbee Virtual Device, omdat het geen radio bevat. En aan de rechterkant moet er in dat Zigbee-netwerk iets zijn wat die vertaalslag maakt van Bluetooth Low Energy naar, uh, naar Zigbee. En dat is het Zigbee Direct Device. En dat zie je daar aan de linkerkant uh, bij deze, in dit geval een lamp. Maar dat kan elk ander Zigbee-apparaat zijn wat Zigbee Direct ondersteunt. Um, de telefoon kan trouwens, dat kan ook net zo goed bijvoorbeeld een smart speaker zijn. Er zijn ook apparaten die bijvoorbeeld heel standaard wel Bluetooth Low Energy hebben. Een Alexa of wat dan ook, ja, dat is... Dat zou ook kunnen. Um, ja, hoe praat het dan? Hè? Ik bedoel, een van de belangrijke aspecten natuurlijk van, hey, ik, ik voeg iets toe. En er, er zit een, ik, heb een, ik heb een Zigbee netwerk, ik ga praten met iets wat, wat ik verwacht dat het veilig is. Mijn lampen moeten niet automatisch aan en uitgaan. Uh, dus er is uh, goed nagedacht over het stukje security. Um, dus om te zorgen dat je van Bluetooth Low Energy te, kan praten met je Zigbee netwerk... Moet je zeker weten natuurlijk dat het apparaat geauthenticeerd is, geautoriseerd is om te praten. En dus er zit, je, er zit een, ook een laag point-to-point uh, -point security in tussen Bluetooth, Low Energy en dat uh, Zigbee Direct Device, die lamp die je in het vorige plaatje ziet. En daarnaast heeft Zigbee ook nog de mogelijkheid om uh, ja, een end-to-end -end security pad op te zetten vanuit je uh, telefoon naar een apparaat op het Zigbee netwerk. Um, dat is ook gebruikmakend van de laatste security features van Zigbee, genaamd R23, dat eigenlijk uh, nou, anderhalf maand geleden released is, officieel. Um, maar goed, dat staat hier in principe los van, maar daar gebruiken we wel uh, de kennis of de, ja, dezelfde eigenschappen van voor het security gedeelte. Nu noemde ik net al het commissioning stukje, van, nou, bedoel, een van de belangrijke dingen is van hoe kan ik uh, beginnen met mijn Zigbee netwerk. Um, en het kan uh, in, in, met Zigbee Direct dus heel makkelijk. Ik pak een lamp, die, zet ik, die kan bijvoorbeeld al, uh, ik, ik kan misschien al een bestaand netwerk hebben. Mijn uh, telefoon, die weet al hoe dat netwerk in elkaar zit. Die heeft de, de credentials al van het netwerk. Ik draai mijn lamp erin en ik kan meteen alle data van mijn netwerk naar die lamp pushen. En dan werkt het meteen. Dat is, zo, uh, dat is een makkelijke use case die mogelijk is uh, gemaakt met Zigbee Direct. En daarnaast kun je ook met het standaard, wat het, 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 het standaard commissioning methodes die er nu al in Zigbee zitten. Wederom, te veel detail om dat nu uit te leggen, maar uh, die, die triggeren vanuit, uh, vanuit je telefoon. Um, en dan een stukje control use case. Dat is wat ik ook noemde. Uh, ik wil mijn lamp aanzetten, maar ik, niet per se uh, 
uh, deze lamp, maar ik wil bijvoorbeeld die lamp aanzetten of ik wil uh, uh, die schakelaar uitlezen vanuit de telefoon. Ook dat kan door uh, de data hierover te tunnelen via hem en dat dan vertalen in Zigbee pakketten die vervolgens uitkomen bij uh, het apparaat wat je wil gebruiken. Um, en zoals gezegd, end-to-end -end kan het ook, zodat de security, uh, dat, ja, in principe alles is encrypted tussen, uh, tussen deze telefoon en het uiteindelijke device. Um, additional uh, features, dus ja, een extra optie, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy is beperkt. Ik, ja, kort, een vraag, ja? Ja, Hele goede vraag. Um, ik, um, dat komt eigenlijk ook een beetje terug in het additional feature stuk. Dus ik kan heel even doorsliden. Net de tag toevallig niet op deze slide. Um, het kan allebei. Dus het kan zowel samenwerken met een, een, een netwerk, wat ook een bridge heeft, wat ook via IP geconnect is. Maar het kan ook zo zijn dat je je telefoon gebruikt om een nieuw netwerk op te zetten. En dat je telefoon uh, dat controlpunt is, dat uh, in feite je netwerk bedient. En dan, of, of je smart speaker die in principe altijd aanwezig is. En dus het kan allebei. Dus je hoeft niet per se connected te zijn naar het internet om dit te gebruiken. Dus het gaat allemaal echt rechtstreeks via Bluetooth naar Zigbee. Ja, ja. Um, als optie. Um, wat, wat, wat ook belangrijk is om, te noten, uh, om te, op te merken is natuurlijk het feit van, ja, Bluetooth Low Energy is beperkt tot in range. Hè. Je kunt dus niet vanuit hier uh, helemaal aan de andere kant van je huis of, of in de tuin je lampen bedienen uh, um, van een apparaat dat ja, misschien heel dichtbij je staat. Dus je hebt een bepaalde beperking um, um, om het mogelijk, dat, dat is ook weer relatief, hè, in principe kun je wel veel bereiken, hoor. Maar om het mogelijk te maken dat je makkelijk tussen verschillende lampen die Zigbee Direct enabled zijn, dus die ZDD's kan switchen, um, is, het, is het zo dat het ook uh, uh, seamless uh, overschakelt naar de verschillende lampen. Dus je hebt eenmaal de, de uh, credentials, de security, is aanwezig op die ZVD, die heeft rechten om het netwerk te bedienen. Dan kan hij zowel hier het netwerk bedienen als hier. Hij hoeft niet per se... Het is niet dat je gekoppeld bent aan één plek in je huis om je hele Zigbee-netwerk te bedienen. Um, en dat moet natuurlijk wel wederom gebaseerd zijn op autorisatie. Het is niet zomaar zo dat het uh, standaard aanstaat. Um, Timing-wise, ik sluit nu af om mijn collega nu wat kans te geven. Uh, <laughs> um, Zigbee Direct is al released. Dus in uh, 2022 hebben we de 1.0 specificatie kunnen releasen. Dat betekent niet alleen dat we een, een, een boekwerk en standaard hebben, die jullie gewoon kunnen downloaden trouwens bij Connectivity Standards Alliance. Uh, maar daarnaast betekent het ook dat het certificeringsprogramma, wat gekoppeld is aan alles wat de Connectivity Standards Alliance doet, certificeren van apparaten die ik voldoen aan de standaard, ook open is. En uiteindelijk bepaalt dan elke manufacturer, elke, elke fabrikant bepaalt zelf wanneer eventueel apparaten met Zigbee direct worden gereleased. Nog een vraag. Daar is, het in, in, daar is het niet uh, voor bedoeld in eerste instantie, nee. nee. Dus het echt, uh, de focus was vanuit, uh, vanuit dat virtual device, dus te praten met Zigbee. Maar zoals ik al net noemde, er zit wel een kleine twist in, in de zin van dat zo'n smart speaker of uh, een, een Bluetooth of een energy device ook het controlepunt kan zijn. Dus ja, zou iemand dan een Bluetooth of energy device kunnen maken wat zich aan Bluetooth kant voorstelt als X, uh, ja, als een bepaald device, en dat doorkoppelt, ja, het zou kunnen, maar het is niet, niet het doel van deze standaard. Dus ja, goede vraag, zeker. Sorry, what, what?
in principle, any Bluetooth low energy device could uh, be uh, such a uh, virtual device, as long as you have the, the, well, the software to run that standard. Eh? The standard is available, so you can start implementing today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you, you you can you can uh, 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 of course uh, to certify there are some some rules. Yeah, I mean that's that that part. Uh, I mean if you want to sell devices, that's yeah. that's going to be uh, tricky. And then obviously, again, this is an open standard, so you can just download the spec and you can start implementing. Yeah. Uh, but there's a difference, I guess, if you want to uh, use it commercially. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that you can say now I'm compliant to this, and uh, yeah. uh, that's just also to uh, make sure that uh, yeah, yeah. you know what the, what the user can expect. But but yeah, you can. You can. Um, yeah, as I said, it's an ongoing effort. Uh, there are some more materials. You can look at uh, the CSA website uh, for uh, for the actual spec uh, if you want to download that one. Uh, there's another uh, YouTube video that shows a little bit more of uh, of this. Uh, the standard. A lot of members uh, have partaken in the in the standardization effort. Uh, some more than others, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's how it works. Um, so yeah, that's my uh, my part. And then I will now turn over the slide deck to Leo, who can start on the other part of uh, CSA called Matter. Yep. Thanks, Sander. Um, yeah. So Matter is, Zigbee has been around since 2000 something. Matter is the new kid on the block, relatively. Um, okay. Uh, about myself, I've been with Philip Research since, I think, 33 years. Um, then most of the time working on, on TVs, uh, smart home stuff, before it was called smart home. Um, moved to the, the lighting division, now called Signify, um, about 10 years ago. Um, system architect there, doing all kind of connectivity, wireless connectivity stuff. Um, I've been the, uh, the lead for some of the U products you might recognize here, so I'm the, if something not entirely working there, you might want to chase me afterwards. Um, <laughs> that's in the coffee corner, not a <laughs> matter-related topic. Um, I'm leading the standardization team, so about uh, 10 people do part-time work on, on, on standardization for Signify inside CSA. Um, I'm on the board, I'm on the, the steering committee, that's just the administrative part, but also steering where the entire thing is going. Um, and I've been writing lots of things on the spec, reviewing it, hundreds of comments on mine. Um, spec, test plans, you name it. A lot of work. Um, why did we start Matter? Or actually, why did the big guys start Matter? Because it didn't get started by companies like Signify who make products, it's more like the Apple, Google, Amazons of the world. A couple of years back, they had smart home stuff, but it didn't really pick up with the consumers. The problem was that they, they all did things their own way. So you could have your Apple or Google Amazon system, and they all had a way to control your smart light. However, they all had their different languages. So one said switch on, the other one said on's true, and the second one on dot yes. Well, in the end, as a human, you understand they're the same. But for the light bulb, it means, well, I need to implement three standards. And as a manufacturer, of course, it's not very really nice, but also for the consumer, this is a hassle because then you get these well-known icons. Uh, you, you, this is the consequence you've seen on, on boxes. This one might work with uh, Google, but not with Apple. And then as a consumer, as soon as you start with one, you have kind of a lock-in. So the next smart home products you buy, you're kind of forced to buy them from the same manufacturer. Um, and of course, that means that, that the, 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 the smart home enthusiast will pick up, but that's only a smart, small fraction of the world. Um, so to make smart home actually work with the larger majority of the people, um, these big guys actually got together. They realized they needed to do something together I instead of this uh, Babylonian uh, language uh, problem. And Effectively, the idea about matter is that the language that you talk to these devices is actually the same. So, 
they realized it doesn't make sense to start competing on this basic functionality of how to switch on a light bulb or how to, to switch on a washing machine, but rather to differentiate on features on how your UI works or what kind of automation you features you offer to the consumer. That's where they want to differentiate. But the, 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 the basic language of how to switch on something, let, they decided to, to do something together. Um, the other, apart from this operational part, the commissioning part is, is, is relevant because also there everybody had their own way of getting the device onto the network, getting, having some secure credentials inside the product so that you cannot commission your neighbor's light bulbs. Um, so also the commissioning flow and the QR code that you need for that is standardized. Um, with that, indeed, we have indeed what, what in, in technical terms, oh, sorry, in technical terms, it's called the commission data, common data representation. So the way that you talk about the features of a device, which command it supports, what kind of attributes does it have, how do you read out the light level, those kind of things, and the commissioning. Um, so they started with a few companies. Indeed, as I said, um, they got, they realized they didn't want to start their own standards organization. So that's why they went to then the Zigbee Alliance, which became the CSA, to, to have the, the, the framework to, to, to talk about these things. And I think hundreds of other companies thought this was a good idea. Um, so now I think we are three or four hundred uh, companies um, working together. Um, important part to realize, the transport part is IPv6, um, but the, the flavor of technology underneath that is, is still open. So you can do Thread, which is the same 15.4 as Zigbee, but then with an IP layer on top. Can be your normal Wi-Fi, can be Ethernet. And there's Bluetooth in there, but it's only used in the commissioning part. So the commissioning part uses Bluetooth, but everything else is running over IP. And for the consumer, of course, this thing here with the QR code to get the credentials, but also the Meta logo is the, the seal that buy this and it will work with any other Meta product. Um, so that's helpful for the consumers. It's helpful for the manufacturers, as I explained, because as a manufacturer, you need to implement only one protocol and not three or four or five. Um, so that all sounds good, right? Um, the first peek under the hood, um, what's actually on the stack. Um, so effectively, this is a nice graphical picture of what I just explained, an IP layer, TCP, UDP, and the Meta protocol on top. Um, the focus is on security. There's a later slide on that. Um, the other important part is this, it's not just spec text and a test plan, but it's also a, an open source implementation. So everybody can download the SDK um, and start uh, tinkering themselves. Um, and indeed, the, the intent was to have it on, 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 on existing CPUs. That's not something you need a very huge memory for. Um, on device side, what we started with is, the, again, it's, of course, it's not a for organization that says, we're going to build this. It's about companies that are active in a certain domain and therefore want to get support for that domain. So the initial domains, uh, devices that support matter you see here is effectively reflecting what the companies, the lead companies were selling at that moment and thought were interesting. So um, there's a lighting part, uh, door locks, media devices like TVs and smart boxes, controllers and bridges all kind of safety security sensors, uh, window shades, and the HVAC. So, but again, it's not limiting, but uh, just, just a reflection of what companies were interested and active in the early days. Um, security part. So indeed, uh, if you start something new, of course, you need to make sure that you have the, the, the right level of security, which is basically the state of the art. That you can't do anything older than that. Um, so it's, it's uh, authentication at the station for commissioning. So to get a device onto the network, you check whether it's genuine from the manufacturer it claims to be. You check whether it's certified. Um, the messages, they're all encrypted, of course, and it's one by one between two devices. So even if you're on the network, if you're not part of, or if you're not one of the two parties who are communicating, you can see the message, but you can't decrypt it. Even on top of that, there's access control, so the administrator will tell, okay, this switch can control this light. And that means this light knows that if a message comes from this switch, it can actually do something. If it comes from another one, it will re get rejected. Um, 
Cryptography is, like I said, state of the art. Um, there's passcodes and certificates to set up those connections. Uh, we've discussed the authenticity. In the end, uh, this is all good technology, but for the consumer, all the technology should be hidden. So we want to make sure that you only can commission your own devices and not the neighbor's devices. But for the consumer, it needs to be as easy as possible. So that's this QR code thing, which has a secret, which only matches this device. So the neighbor doesn't have that secret, so it won't work for them. Um, another thing that's new compared to other standards is you have a, a database, online database, which is called the Distributed Compliance Ledger, which allows you to, for each device, device type, to look up whether it's actually genuine, whether it's certified. So whether, and indeed, whether you are running the latest software for that device, or that you are running an outdated software. All right. Um, of course, it's all very nice, but we're not in a greenfield scenario. Eh? So you can always define, define a new standard and start building for that, but people have stuff in their homes. And you don't want to uh, make them angry. Um, so the customers, they've invented in their IoT devices, uh, like Zigbee or Z-Wave or whatever, and they want to keep using that. So uh, new stuff will, will indeed use matter, but the existing ones uh, we don't want to replace. Um, so there's two solutions, obviously, for that. One is to do the infield upgrade. So if a device is capable enough, you can get new software on there and to add the meta stack to it. Um, and the other one is bridging. And uh, given our 10-year history with Philips Hue, this is something we also explored quite a bit. And we contributed quite a bit to get this part into the standard. Um, partially, the reason for that is that if you have 10-year-old devices, their CPUs and, and memory is so limited that you couldn't run matter on top of that. So if you want to keep using them, you need to use the bridging approach. Um, so this diagram and the next uh, are going to explain a bit on, on how that works. Um, so we have here uh, a bridge, which is going to be the interface between the Zigbee world on this side and the Meta side on world on this side. Um, you have an app which belongs with the bridge manufacturer, which, of course, where you've named all the lights. On this side here, what we do is that the bridge will look what's on the Zigbee side and expose that on the Meta side. So the commissioner here will see a single Meta device. It thinks it's a single Meta device, but actually it has a lot of end, so-called endpoints, which means this guy has three lights, for instance, and, may, and the next light also a few sensors and switches. So he'll, this one will see, okay, I find something here which actually has three lights. So these three lights here are the, the ones which are actually here. Um, and of course, you can have on this side some normal metal lights as well. So then if you want to control your lights, I think, yep, the automation is working, um, you'll have a message from this guy which says, switch on all my lights which is then a single message on the meta network. It gets picked up by the lights, they switch on. The, the bridge also receives this message as a meta message. It, it translates that into the equivalent on Zigbee and switches on the Zigbee lights as well. So to the user, this is just a single switch on action by pressing a button here or talking to a, a smart speaker, but it switches on, on all the lights. Similarly, we can do things with switches and sensors. So if we have some sensor switches on, on, on the side over here, um, if you press a button there, it will, the bridge will pick that up over Zigbee. It exposes on the, the virtual switch you have here that it has been pressed, and it gets picked up by the, the guys over here. So it can see the temperature in the room, it can see the switch state. <coughs> and you can have your automation engine here, which, for instance, could have a rule that if this button is pressed, you need to switch on some lights. Um, so again, um, one other thing which we didn't mention just is the, the multi-admin part. So in the, in the old days, you would pair a device with Apple or Google, and that's it. You could control it with Apple or Google, but not both. In Meta, we've added something that you can indeed, once you have paired a device with, for instance, an Apple system, you can also pair it with a Google and an Amazon system, etc. So you don't need to choose anymore. If, if one person in the household is using all kind of uh, Apple iOS equipment, the other one is more an Android uh, aficionado, that's possible. And they can keep on using the, the, the world they, uh, they, they live in and they want to live in. Um, of course, that means that the guys, they need to kind of coexist, but they don't want to really know a lot about each other, so there's a kind of a, a framework called multifabric which is in there, which shields between them what needs to be shielded, but allows them to see the parts that they need to see from each other. That's a kind of a 
I wouldn't call it a, a samenlevingscontract in Dutch, but it's like... <laughs> they have to live together. Uh, they may, might not want to, but they need to, and that, that's uh, sometimes giving a bit of friction between them, but... Uh, um, of course, that, that the developers will be happy here because they need to develop things only once. Um, and there's a large community. Uh, I see a lot of questions also now on, on our Slack where you see people, hey, I'm new here, uh, I'm starting this kind of product, where do I need to look in the spec? Where do, is this, why is this not working? Or which ecosystem is supporting this device? And that's working quite well for the newcomers. Um, retailers will be happy because they no longer have this issue with all the logos. They can just have one aisle with all metal products and people, whether they are like Apple, Google, Amazon, Samsung, whatever, the smart things, they will just be happily buying the products there. And now also people are looking in on the commercial side, so whether you can use this in, in like uh, uh, small buildings or multi-dwelling units or having people that rent out an entire apartment block with smart locks. And then you need to have a system where some of the control is with, of course, with the building owner and some of the control is with the, the tenant. And that, that again, is a, a balancing thing that needs to be added to the standard. Right, what else do we got? Um, Another list of companies. Um, so at the moment we have 300 companies and 4,000 people on the uh, on, on the electronic system where all the files are. Um, so we do have, of course, a spec, but more importantly, we have an SDK. We have test scripts and tools. So you can, once you build your product, you can also take a Raspberry Pi and start testing it. Uh, we have a certification program, and that, that's an important thing for consumers to know that if somebody claims to have a metal product, that it actually does what's in the spec. So if you make a product, you need to go to an, an approved test lab. They will check your product against the same test script you've done in-house, in eh? so you can do the, the, the driving license before you, you get to the exam. Uh, then you get certified, and then you can use the logo. And with the logo, the consumer has a reassurance that this guy will do the, the, the protocol as it's intended. Um, of course, this is not, I mean, this is where we started. Eh? In October last year, the, the, the first uh, 1.0 standard was released. Um, we'll have uh, new releases every six months. Um, and this is a, a list in no particular order of the things that are coming up. And again, uh, it's, people are now joining and they say, well, why don't you support like a washing machine, a robot vacuum cleaner, uh, sensors whether my door is closed, se sense whether the air quality is good enough, smoke detectors, uh, energy management, charging your, your car. Access points and border routers, uh, presence sensing and doorbells and cameras and you name it. There's all, if, if you have a couple of companies that are interested in a certain topic, they can get together and add a, like a device profile that benefits from the, the framework that we have already built. Yeah. So the, the framework itself was generic, but on top of that are device types. And for each device type, you need a group that defines, okay, what between like a washing machine from LG or Samsung or Bosch, what is the common part that you can standardize? Because the whole goal here is that you don't need a Samsung app to use a smart for a Samsung washing machine. You can use any app. And for that, you need to, this any app needs to understand what's the basics of a washing machine. It doesn't need to know all the peculiarities of Samsung smart, Samsung or LG or whatever. And in that way, you need to get a kind of a, a common denominator between all those manufacturers of a certain device type. So you need, you need to get those guys in to, to get together and define it together. Ah, last slide. If you want to do these things yourself, um, the hands-on part. Eh? So, of course, you can take an existing ecosystem controller. So the Apple and Googles of the world, they are having uh, matter in their products. Um, Home Assistant is doing the same. You can do your own. Eh? So you can take a Raspberry Pi or a Linux machine with Bluetooth uh, and use have this, this chip tool, which is basically like a command tool thing to send commands. Um, you can pick existing devices like the, the Philips Hue Bridge. Uh, at the moment, we're still in the, in, a, in the beta phase, but anybody who gets a free developer uh, account can, can download it. You enable it on your bridge, and you're in business. Uh, but you can also do your own. Eh? So you can get go to uh, one of the many silicon providers. They will have development boards, and they will happily tell you how to run Matter and make a certain Matter product on their platform. Um, for this make your own path, you need the SDK, which we can get here. It's just open source, free, just a license, uh, standard licensing. And the same as the spec. Uh, it's a bulky one, but you don't need to read everything to understand it. I mean, it's, you're probably interested in a certain part. I think there was a, 
a student uh, who did a master thesis on security, so she read it, at least the security parts, and that took her month. So, fair warning up front, you don't need to understand all of that to, to actually start using it. And I think uh, that's it for what we prepared. And I'm not sure whether we have time left for questions. Yeah. But There, there is no license fee for either Zigbee or Mavo. So, the, 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 for the, the price between a Zigbee product and a Z-Wave product or a Meta product, I don't think it's, it's limited, lim there's no license. I mean, no, I don't know about Z-Wave, but the other ones don't have a license fee. It's just how much a manufacturer has costs and wants to charge up for, for the other things, of course. They need to be, uh, uh, they need to do certification. So, that, and of course, that, that means your product goes to a lab, you need to pay the lab for the hours they make. That's the cost they have on additional cost on, you need to make the product, but the additional cost to get the logo. But that, that's a couple of thousand dollars per product. So that, that diminished over if you have a reasonable large range, that can be not be a large uplift. So I think it's more, the, more a matter of value pricing than cost pricing. And I wouldn't, the license cost, uh, there's no licenses involved here, so. No. Yep. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I'm not a Wi-Fi expert, uh, but I know they are uh, both Wi-Fi and Thread. You can make battery-powered devices, um, and they, uh, that's one of the things in the upcoming release is better support for those devices so that they, the, the rest of the world understands that these guys are sometimes out for lunch, <laughs> so they're, they're sleeping. Uh, of course, the, the trick in battery-powered devices is only one thing. You sleep, you sleep, and you sleep. Um, and, of course, it needs support from your access point, so the so Wi-Fi 6 uh, does a nice thing there. Um, but the, I think there, as long as you keep that part up on, uh, at, a, at a reasonable level, and that either Wi-Fi or Thread gives you the support to do something where you can mostly sleep and once in a while wake up and, and see whether something for you, once you have that arranged, matter, it, the, the, I mean, that's a non-matter problem, I would say, um, but, but how to fit the light barrel of the LED is more power than how to fit the Zigbee light barrel. No. Yeah. The, yeah. But the, the sleeping part of, I mean, those devices are different in a way that because they don't, uh, they're not battery powered, but they're mains powered. Mm -hmm. So, but they do have, of course, a standby power. The standby power is mostly to keep the CPU running and just a little bit for the, 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 the radio frequency part. So, and, and both the Zigbee and Wi-Fi lights, and Bluetooth lights for that matter, I mean, because they're mains powered, they will just be always on. Um, so they are, the radio part is just a small fraction of the entire usage. So it's, it's more a matter of making sure that your power supply and your CPU are not energy hungry. So. And if you really want to make it go a step further, you can try to make a sleepy device that's on main power, but then the standard allows that. Um, that depends on what your access point is doing, um, because of what it's, it's a flat IP network, uh, and on that flat IP network we have the administrator which is telling who to control, this, uh, talk to whom. If you're, um, that's, so that's the matter protocol, but of course a device can do any IP communication next to that, and there, there you come more into the normal firewall rules where your access point has a function that you can say, well, some of my devices cannot talk to the internet. That's not a matter problem, but that's more a firewall problem of your access point. Is it one of the things in the standard that you can block it? Or? Um, I think it's one of the things that are being worked on. As, uh, if you re remember, the, the access points guys is, is, is actually one, one of the many topics they are looking at is indeed, can we standardize in some way? 
because right now some routers have this functionality that you can say some of my devices cannot talk to the internet or can only talk to some some uh, some servers eh? like a, a light bulb can talk to one particular manufacturer's site to get its software updates but not the rest of the world uh, so those functions are available nowadays on routers but it's it's proprietary and uh, this group one of the many things that this group is looking at is can we standardize in some way that indeed from any app you can control any access point to 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 make sure that some devices or all of my devices can or cannot talk to the internet. So again, it's existing functionality and how to standardize it. No? No? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in the device or in the only possible distance away, the Wiki network and connect matter items. Yeah, that I mean the way we've built the, the, the definition of the bridge in matter is, is what I've shown here uh, that you take the lights or the sensors you have and you expose them as virtual ones on this side. That's what defined in the standard. But that does not I mean, and that also means, of course, that guys on this side can control lights or reach central states. That's part which is in the standard. But as a manufacturer, you can also choose uh, to do the reverse, so that you say, well, if I have something over here that sees the entire matter network, I can do virtual Zigbee devices on this side, which like these lights, I could mimic them to be virtual Zigbee lights over here. That I on this side I would have three real lights and two virtual lights, and then controllers on this side could control all those lights and again if you then uh, these could be directly controlled and the virtual lights via the bridge would go a command to this one so that's basically this image but then mirrored in, in direction but again that's possible to build but not in the standard A lot of communication is just really IPv6 based, so you can try to do things over IPv4, it's not forbidden, but it's uh, a lot of the features, especially because we're using Thread, that, that's really IPv6 based, so they are, um, I mean, I think the, 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 the wording in the standard is you can try to do this over IPv4 at your own uh, risk, and it might not work towards all those devices, so it, it's an, a, another push which is really uh, jump, uh, taking on IPv6 as a as a carrier for the future. <laughs>